Yeah, so I'm uh, vice chair of the security group, uh, and uh, we're undergoing some reorganization or a new new uh, structure for security activities. So that's really going to be the top of topic of the talk today. Okay, so here here's what we have uh, as of last week. Uh, we have the board of directors, there's uh, several standing committees, the technical committee, the marketing committee, and the technical committee generates task groups. We've been hearing from a lot of the task groups in the, you know, in the last uh, two days. A security group was created uh, at the, you know, the beginning when the foundation was, was formed, uh, and uh, it was in, historically it was a pretty small group. Uh, we have uh, uh, myself and Joe Zai were really the most uh, active members, and not too many, real, realistically, not too many other active members. And so we said, well, how, you know, what are the most important things we can work on? And Joe decided to take on uh, the uh, trusted execution environment for a microcontroller type system, that is to say, a system without an MMU, uh, possibly a deeply embedded type of microcontroller. Uh, and, and I agreed to work on the cryptographic extensions. Um, uh, and this progressed, albeit a little bit slowly, but it, but it progressed. We made progress on those activities, but in the kind of the bigger scheme of security, it seemed like we were, you know, missing out on a lot. So security is an you know, immensely huge area. It cuts across uh, a lot of the other groups' activities. Uh, it, it affects, you know, its effects and is affected by, you know, many many other. Uh, activities uh, in, the, in the other groups. Uh, and this point, you know, let's say, really came home uh, when uh, you know, we had the Spectre and uh, Meltdown flaws, or highly publicized flaws that uh, are vulnerabilities that came out uh, earlier this year. And yeah, look, you know, we're not doing anything about that. We're working on these other two kind of very narrow uh, things, but uh, we're missing the big picture. We're missing the uh, kind of a historic opportunity for RISC-V to create, to, to be the most secure processor uh, because it doesn't have all the legacy of the other ISAs. We have an opportunity to define uh, uh, things fresh uh, and, and that gives us an opportunity, a really historic opportunity, once in a generation kind of opportunity to be able to uh, do things better. Uh, with this organization, we're sort of you know, missing the boat. We were, we were incapable of, of uh, addressing the broader security concerns. Now, somewhere on the way to the forum, something changed, and uh, a lot of people started joining the security group. Uh, and uh, so here were Joe and I struggling along with our two little uh, activities, and then a bunch of people joined. They wanted to know what about systems with MMUs, and what about all these other things, and what about you know uh, 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 cache timing attacks, and et cetera, et cetera. And it turns out that uh, last time that I uh, checked, a couple days ago, the security group is now the largest task group uh, in the foundation. So big change from, you know, like two of us working uh, almost by ourselves to 75 people being in the uh, task group. And we, we didn't feel like this organization was really taking the best advantage of that. So we talked to um, a number of board members and, you know, and uh, uh, et cetera, we, we proposed a new organization, uh, and as of uh, last week, uh, that was uh, implemented. So it was adopted by the uh, board of directors, and we created a, a new security standing group. So this would be a perpetual group. Its job is not to create ISA extensions, and maybe explicitly, not, that, you know, that's not to be uh, part of that group. Uh, ISA extensions are still to be done by task groups. But the plan is to take the two activities that we've already started, the, uh, the microcontroller trusted execution environment, the crypto, and create task groups from those. We expect that to happen very shortly. Uh, basically, it's already in the charter of these uh, that's been approved for the uh, standing committee. So I expect that to go relatively smoothly. It's kind of a formality uh, to get these two groups set up. And then the security, new security group Standing committee can can take this broader, longer-term view. Uh, it's, it's not designated to solve one specific, you know, ISA extension. It's it's to uh, uh, you know take this longer, bigger view of, of security. Uh, and it reports uh, to the board of directors, and then uh, the 
the uh, task groups uh, still report to the technical committee, but, but they'll be kind of dotted line uh, to the security group as well. Uh, and I think you saw this slide in effect earlier when Kirsta uh, cut this out of the charter, which is exactly what I did too. So this is part of the uh, charter that was written, uh, that was voted on uh, by the uh, board of directors, and it, it gives you some idea of the kind, kind of activities that uh, uh, the standing committee is going to be working on. Uh, one of the things uh, also is we'll be having a speaker program so we can uh, help educate ourselves and, and bring in experts uh, uh, worldwide uh, from the security community uh, to be able to uh, you know, help educate ourselves and keep interest uh, up and, uh, and keep the uh, membership uh, growing. Uh, okay, so... Um, uh, Another thing which has uh, happened, uh, I said the membership has been growing, but also the company membership uh, for related to security has also been growing. So we've added a couple of very notable groups, uh, Data61, uh, who, who's worked on the uh, SEL4, um, Microkernel, uh, they've joined the foundation recently, Intrinsic ID joined the foundation recently. And so we're, we're really kind of building a lot of momentum with you know, world-class world experts. Uh, that are that are now uh, part of this activity, and I'm not going to even let you read through all this in detail. Uh, it's too much, too much tech. But this is uh, more of the charter uh, that was um, uh, written, and the third page here. And so I'm just kind of putting these in the in the record here. These should all be on the website uh, shortly, so you can uh, uh, see the charter for the standing committee. Uh, one, of the board of one of the board of directors' requirements was find some good leadership uh, uh, for this group, and uh, we've done uh, very well with that. Uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Helena Hanshu, who's uh, uh, vice president of Rambus and a fellow at, at uh, Rambus in the cryptography research division, uh, has agreed to uh, become the chair of this group. She's a very, very accomplished uh, person, uh, something like uh, 50 published papers, eight and 18 patents, uh, very strong in both academia and industry, uh, and, and um, uh, she's a uh, referee or, or is on the program committee of, uh, of a number of the most prominent security uh, conferences uh, every year, so she's really a, a great addition. Uh, I hope everybody uh, welcomes her to this role. Uh, then uh, for vice chair, uh, we also did very well. Uh, got. Uh, Dr. Joe uh, Kinnery uh, from Galwa, I guess next speaker uh, is from Galwa, Joe helped write the next paper, I understand. And um, uh, Joe also has both a, a academic and a uh, industrial uh, experience, so I think that's very helpful uh, for us here. So he's a full professor, uh, and now he's a uh, uh, principal scientist at, uh, at Galwa. Yeah. I've known both of these people personally for some time. Helen and I have known, uh, I think, 10 years, uh, and she was uh, recommended uh, uh, for this position by Paul Kocher, who's former CEO of uh, CRI, uh, who uh, hired her uh, and uh, promoted her to vice president. So, uh, you know, we're, again, we're very happy to have these two people. They're really uh, uh, top-notch, world-class people in the security industry. Uh, I said we expect soon to form these uh, other two task groups, uh, and so we've got proposed charters for those that are uh, in circulation, being refined. Uh, so here's the one for the trusted execution environment. Uh, I, think, uh, I think Joe is here uh, who, who wrote this, and, uh, uh, and we hope Joe will uh, continue to chair this activity. So uh, Joe didn't give me a picture, so he has to suffer with this kind of blurry one that I was able to to find online, uh, and but, uh, here's here's his background. He's working at uh, uh, Nvidia and in their, in their secure processors. I think you might remember him from uh, workshop uh, number four. I think it was where uh, where he talked about how uh, Nvidia was going to be changing all their uh, security processors over to uh, Risk Five and the reasons why why they selected to do that. And so this activity, the trust execution environment activity for microcontrol, is really kind of a direct outgrowth of that. Uh, and then um, the cryptographic extension. So again, we've, we've created a charter which is in, in discussion uh, for the um, uh, cryptographic extensions. 
uh, and uh, you know that's really just outgrowth of the work that I reported on uh, a couple of workshops ago, uh, which is based on the uh, uh, using the vector extension, using the registers in the vector extensions to hold the long variables and do the long arithmetic that uh, that's used in cryptography. Uh, and so we're continue that. We've expanded the scope. Uh, a little bit to address uh, some key management issues and, and also look at uh, uh, creating a standard uh, interface for uh, uh, retrieving uh, tr true random numbers. Uh, and this is me. And uh, my background is at uh, uh, MicroSemi, so I hope to be chairing uh, this uh, task group. Uh, and I've done the, uh, a lot of uh, security implementation or architecture for our uh, MicroSemi uh, flash-based FPGAs. And that's it. So for once, I'm ahead of time. <laughs> <laughs>